Hello, good evening to you all. I am Parth Varu, Event Program Manager for Reactor Bangalore. I welcome you all to the Reactor Bangalore again. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. Now I'd like to welcome Bhargavi. Bhargavi is a Microsoft certified trainer, also a software developer at Ford Motor Company. I would now hand over to Bhargavi to begin the session. Thank you, Pat. Let me share my screen. Hope my screen is visible. Yep, it's visible. OK, uh, welcome you all to the today's session with uh, myself for the topic of AI with Azure. Let me give a brief introduction of myself. I am an MTech graduate from Bits Pilani and I am a uh, Microsoft certified trainer and I have experience in RPA with Azure, UiPath and Pega. And I am also a certified data scientist and this is my LinkedIn ID. Please free free to connect with me. Let's let's not waste in much much time and uh, let's quickly jump on to the topic. We will be covering the these topics uh, which are listed here, which is we will be seeing an introduction of artificial intelligence and how the artificial intelligence will be used in Microsoft Azure. And we will also be seeing what is machine learning and how machine learning is being used in Microsoft Azure. And we will be seeing computer visions and how it is being used in Azure. And also how to create chatbots and other kind of bot services that are available in Azure. Okay. What is artificial intelligence? And we know here and there, everywhere we hear the term artificial intelligence and AI is becoming one of our uh, wanted technology. And if AI is being there, then that is then that is going to rule the world. And we are hearing of that sorts. What is exactly artificial intelligence means? It does not. Um, uh, what it means is. It simulates what human can do and uh, what we train for it to do. And uh, one such is uh, it will be predicting the outcome and uh, it will be recognizing the pattern on the historic data. And if we are and if we are if we have any abnormal events that occur in any credit card or uh, anything then that would be making decision for us which is anomaly detection and then uh, it would be predicting it would be interrupting the visual input like if you are going in and uh, if you are going in to an office and it automatically detects you based on the image of yourself and uh, um, it makes you enter to it then that becomes then that becomes uh, a cognitive services which are available here and then it will be used for extracting the value of information from different sources and uh, we have to train it and based on the training it would be gaining the knowledge. Please stop me somewhere if you don't understand. Unmute yourself and uh, please let me know if you have any queries. I would be able to answer. And uh, there are few workloads which are available for artificial intelligence. One such is machine learning and uh, other one is anomaly detection. Next one is computer vision and natural language processing, knowledge mining. And I know you might have heard these words somewhere and uh, many of you might know uh, what 
all are these for and how it will work and we will get started from the basics to and let's go into somewhere deeper and see how it would work for azure um micro machine learning is used to predict the models on based on the data and statistics and anomaly detection is somewhere like what you uh, like what i said earlier if we have some kind of credit card um, fraud or fraud detection then that comes under the anomaly detection and uh, when you want to identify some unusual pattern of what happened and uh, how how it happened and when you have to find those things then that comes under anomaly detection and when it's a computer vision what it means is when you are able to find it when when you are able to interpret the visual input from cameras images and videos then that becomes computer vision basically these inputs are used to identify the ocrs and then uh, these are also used to i uh, used for uh, like what i said earlier these are used as a id id card verifications and then kycs and these are used for those kind of things and uh, wherein you would be you would be with the help of camera be able to recognize your face or image or video and with that you will be able to perform the next set of action to it and natural language processing is one kind of similar uh, similar thing which is available in artificial intelligence where you can interpret or interpret the written or spoken language and engage in dialogues with human users and uh, one such example is when you start typing in uh, letters at edge you will be getting the words behind it right of what you type in mind will be listed over there and those comes under the natural language processing and knowledge mining is uh, knowledge mining is exact ex to extract the information from the data source and uh, create a searchable knowledge store these are basically used to uh, used to store the data data from ourself and collect it and uh, knowledge mining is basically used in bot building and when you want a chat bot then you would be creating a knowledge store for it and you would be building a, a set of actions that the bot has to perform you like a, like take an example you have a chat bot with you and you want you will be getting few responses from it right the, those comes under the knowledge mining now let's see how ai works what are the ai services that are available in azure one um, is azure machine learning and the next one is cognitive service and uh, for bot services we have azure bot service and for cognitive search we have azure cognitive search when these terms are literally new for you then never mind we are going to see uh, in deeper of it and uh, we will also be seeing demo if possible if we have time and uh, azure machine learning is used it azure machine learning is a tool uh, that is used for training deploying and uh, managing the machine learning models and you will be able to deploy everything and uh, you, you, you can predict the model and the model can be predicted by itself and those kind of things can be done with azure machine learning and cognitive service is uh, cognitive service is a part of ai which will be used to identify with the help of vision speech language and decision and then um, we will be having bot service like what i told it, it it might be a conversational conversational bot or it might be some some software bot that it does your work that can be of that sort and azure cognitive search is one thing wherein you will be able to do the searches based on that and uh, enrich 
that will that will be uh, basically depend on the knowledge mining of what we have trained it for okay what is machine learning machine learning is uh, machine learning is you is almost everywhere now like when you have to uh, when you have to predict the models by finding the relationship in data there might be there might be data everywhere right when we speak the data comes out when we write something the data comes out so we have different kind of the data and those things are been um, are been put together and that becomes the data set and when you prepare a data set then those things can be uh, trained and can be given a training for it and uh, make predicting the value for it when you want and uh, perform the actions that what it wants based on the actions that you want so for that you have to train a model right and you have to choose a model for it so model is something which will be acting as the source of source of what you want and uh, um, it will be used to predict the like uh, let's see an example um, many uh, many of us here when we start learning machine learning then uh, we might know about iris data set right uh, we will be having the uh, we will be having the collection of flowers and with the collection of flowers each flowers will be given a label for it and those labels will be given an algorithm on whether we uh, on what relationship that happens between the feature and the label and the model is something that encapsulates the relationship between the feature and the model so uh, now you can understand the models importance right that will be acting as the uh, that will be acting as an important one when it comes for a machine learning purpose and the model is used to predict the label of new sample uh, samples based on its feature it does not mean that you have you will be giving few data sets and you will be training based on that and it would be telling the value it does not mean something of that sort it also it also can when you have trained it then it can also predict something which you haven't trained for so uh, based on the value of the prediction and uh, doing it so those all things which happens in which happens beyond you is called as machine learning now like uh, like what we discussed if we have several data set and those data sets are being put into an algorithm and those algorithms are being trained and you have you are made to answer it whether uh, whether this flowers belongs to this particular uh, particular relation, particular feature and make it to answer then that becomes the machine learning now let's see what are the machine learning what what is the machine learning that is available in azure it's a cloud based platform for machine learning where you will be able to compute compute and perform the jobs that are related for a machine learning purpose and then you will be able to act you will be able to get the services that are available in azure as your machine learning workspace and uh, uh, you will be able to get the, you will be able to upload the data that are, that you have and prepare the models based on the uh, based on the data that what you have models let's see what it is in next slide and make you understand whether what are the different kind of machine learning things that we have and um, when these all things require different uh, different kind of environment to be done right like for some you need python to be uh, python to be present and for uh, for getting the higher higher machine learning data then you you should be having the size and everything depends on uh, depends on all your features 
so you for something you will not be able to develop with your own laptop so you might be dependent on the uh, virtual machine so for those kind of limitations azure machine learning workspace will be acting as a best thing and with the you and the only thing what you should be having is you should be having just a azure subscription and with the help of the azure subscription you will be able to get the azure machine learning workspace and you will be able to access all those all those services which are being present in the uh, azure machine learning workspace and it's a kind of pay at one time go so when when you what when you use you would be paying it for whatever the things that you are using for so you don't have to pay for the extra money that what you are going to develop for like you don't have to buy a separate laptop which has higher storage when you want to develop a machine that has higher um higher that needs a higher storage that's the basic uh, uh basic intention of azure machine learning workspace and yeah um Now these are the things that can be done with the help of the machine learning. And um, one major thing, what uh, machine learning, the machine learning will will be available in. I'm sorry. What machine learning will be available in Azure is it has automated machine learning purpose, wherein it will be automatically predicting the model that would be suitable for your machine learning purpose based on the type that what you have and based on the data what you have and uh, if your data does not match the if your data does not uh, match the particular thing then automated machine learning will let you know that this is the problem and when you want to predict something say in sort of uh, when you want to do the anomaly detection, then it would predict a model saying that this would be the suitable model. Take regression in that case, take classification in this case, and it would be telling you of that sort and would be helping you to get the uh, get the model best fit for it for you. And what you have to do is you have to just give the data data to the model and data to the uh, data to train it and uh, it would be giving you the model for you <laughs> yeah and uh, when you come for azure machine learning designer how it would be looking at looking is of this sort like when you give a data who have diabetes you would be the first step of the machine learning is cleaning it and based on the clean cleansing of data you would be normalizing the data and then after normalizing the data you would be splitting the data as test types and the um, and the trained data for the training for training purposes you would be splitting the data and after that what you would be doing is with the trained uh, for with the split data which has been available here excuse me <coughs> yeah uh, with the with the split data which is available here you will be training the model which will be suitable for your particular data and you will be uh, you you will be able to do the score model which will be having the visualization and everything and uh, a model is being now trained and the score like how your model works will also be evaluated which happens in evaluation model these are the some of the steps that are available in azure and like uh, <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um. Like 
it is mentioned here you will be using a training pipeline to train and evaluate a model and then um, you will be creating an interference pipeline to predict the model <coughs> and then <clears throat> And then, <clears throat> sorry, you would be deploying the pipeline into the <clears throat> apps, whether it, whether it can be a web service or uh, what kind of service that what you need that can be done with that. And uh, you would be interfering that one. Yeah, um, I would be stopping here for a second to answer your queries. Let me know if you guys have any queries. Are there any queries? You can <laughs> unmute your mics and speak. Else you can drop the query in the chat section. Yeah. We have a query in a chat section. Do you want to take it up? Uh, I cannot find the chat section. Okay. What are the Azure services used for mm -hmm. machine learning? Okay. Azure services which are used for machine learning includes the <clears throat> um, you can mix the Azure machine learning services with the other things that are available. Uh, like when when you want the natural language processing to be used, then you can mix it up with the bot services and make use of it. And also there are avail there are other services which are available in uh, machine learning for the machine learning itself, like uh, you have the automated machine learning itself, which is called as auto ML in Azure. And uh, you will be you will be able to get that. And uh, but the thing is, you have to make it fix with the other thing, like whether it can be of uh, computer vision or com uh, or something, something of that sort and uh, make it work for you. And uh, there are many things which are available. You can be deploying the machine learning service as a web service, which is uh, web web service as uh, as AutoML, and then you will be having uh, you will be having machine learning itself uh, to train data regression and binary uh, binary classification, all those kind of all those kind of services are being available in Azure. All the machine learning, almost all the machine learning models are being available in machine learning for, for us in Azure. Did I answer your question or is it still confusing? <clears throat> is one more question from Sandeep. Yeah. He's asking like, is there a need for uh, exploratory data analysis, EDA? Yes, all, absolutely we have that. And uh, we can do exploratory data analysis in uh, machine learning with the help of Azure as well. And uh, what you would be doing is you will be you will be having something called as data lakes, data bricks, wherein you will you can use those uh, those things and uh, will be able to build the model with the help of those things. I would certainly recommend you to go through the data bricks and data lakes for the exploratory data analysis step. OK. 
Okay. Any other questions or can we proceed with the next step? Yeah, I think <clears throat> there are no other questions. We can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, when when you see what are the types of machine learning that are available, then you will be uh, you will be having supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and uh, supervised machine learning. Sorry, was there a question? No, no. Please go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Supervised machine learning is uh, something that where uh, where you will be having the training data with known labels, and so unsupervised machine learning is something where the training data will be unlabeled, and uh, it would be of some sort like you have to train those models and make it work for you with the unlabeled data, and uh, you you will be able to <clears throat> um, like you will not be having a stabilized data, but you will be making that ma making the model predict for you and giving the output. And whereas since uh, machine learning supervised machine learning, you will be having everything ready in your hand and uh, you will be feeding it and it would be giving the data out of it as a predicted value. And supervised machine learning is of two types. One is regression and another one is classification. Where regression is uh, when, when it's all a numeric value, then it comes under a regression. And when it's a kind of categorization, like uh, when it's a person or when it's some kind of heartbeat measurement or when it's some kind of uh, how many, how many, uh, how many persons or something of that sort, then those kind of categorization, whether it is a male or female or uh, something of that sort, then all those categorizations comes under the classification model. <clears throat> like uh, when, when you should always decide on which model will give you the exact prediction for, for some cases, when when you have the known labels itself, you will be having the both confusion of you what you should be using, whether the regression models or classification models of some of some sort. So you should be predicting the number of um, <coughs> number of the data that are available to you, and uh, based on that and how the data depends on you, you should be choosing a model for you, and. <clears throat> The best advantage of using the auto ML is you don't have to work all these background works. Instead, the auto ML itself will work for you and uh, will make you choose the best fit model for you and uh, will let you know it's ha it has been selected this model. And um, when you go for the unsupervised machine learning, what it will be having is it will be having the similar items which are being grouped together. Like uh, when you have car and uh, car and a vehicle, car and a two wheeler, then those two comes under the vehicle, right? So those kind of groupings are being done under the clustering, and uh, those can be th those can be predicted with the help of the machine learning. And for uh, yeah, like what we saw earlier, we will be having model training and validation, wherein uh, you will be splitting the data data into the training set and the validation set, and this particular training set will be will be used to uh, you will be apply applying an algorithm uh, to fit the training data set and this training data set which we had splitted in the step one will be used to um, get that uh, will be combined with the algorithm that can be of regression or that can be of binary classification that can be of any sort based on your data and uh, that would be able to build the model and the trained model this becomes the trained model now the when it combines with an algorithm it becomes a trained model 
So the trained model will then be uh, encapsulated with the relationship in the data and uh, will be able to generate the relationship and uh, with that, you will be able to generate the predictions from the validation of data, and uh, you will be you will be deciding whether it whether it has predicted or uh, whether it has to do the cluster separation, which is unsupervised, based on that. And uh, with the with the result, you would be deciding whether you have to repeat the same step. And what does repeat here means? Um, with the output you would be deciding whether you have to whether you uh, whether you will be using the <clears throat> output which was used here as a training set and uh, will be again performing the similar kind of action for it and uh, until you get a good value from good predicted value from a model you would be repeating the same step to train the model so that it would work good for you and uh, it would be performing and good action for you. And next one in our <clears throat> in our a question agenda. here. Yeah. Like I think uh, Shetty KV has a question. I'm mm -hmm. unmuting the mic. Sure. Yes, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. You have a question, KV Shetty. You've raised your hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, we all can use chat section to ask the questions. Uh, we'll go ahead with the session. Okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, then we are coming into the next part of our session, which is using computer vision services in Azure. Um, what does computer vision means is what we saw earlier. And when it comes to computer vision, you will be having four different four uh, pillars that what it expects is. One is image analysis, which will be used as a, uh, which will be used with, with the help of the image. You will be able to find the data and uh, caption it. And other one is common object detection. Like when you want to uh, find out some object, like whether it is a man or whether it is a plant, then you will be using that. And when it's a face direction, then when it's the example, when what I have told you earlier, when you want to find out, um, when you want to end, give an entry with your face being directed, then that comes there. And <clears throat> smart cropping is one thing where the unwanted data will be removed, right? So that sort will be, uh, will also come in place of computer vision. And optical character recognition is one among uh, one among the major topics what we have been uh, chasing for. Um, OCR is <clears throat> reading the uh, reading the uh, data from the documents where when you give a uh, when you when you train the model to make it read from a document either a PDF or Word or from of Excel, then it would be reading, right? So that comes under the optical character recognition, and that can be of any sort. Like it can be printed or it can be handwritten of that sort. So all those all those things comes under the optical character recognition. And custom vision is something where uh, you will be you will be having the custom image classification. What does custom image classification mean is you will be uh, making a custom for your image and you will be classifying based on that and um, you will also be you will also be making a it, it's a similar thing that what you do uh, with the computer vision it does not have difference much difference on it. Apart from the one like you will be customizing it on what data it has to pick and what data it has to recognize. That's the major thing what you would be 
um, seeing in a customer vision and a computer vision and face is something which we saw earlier itself and form recognizer is also the similar thing what we saw in optical character recognition and <clears throat> this is much about uh, computer vision uh, what we can use in azure these these have these all have a similar uh, these all have uh, services that are available in uh, that are available in azure with the name called cognitive services and with the help of the cognitive service you will be able to uh, you will be able to accompany all the uh, all the services that are listed here, either at image analysis or face detection or optical character recognition, you will be able to accompany all the uh, all the services in Azure with the cognitive service in place. And cognitive service will be used uh, will be used majorly for face detection and uh, face detection and the image classification. <clears throat> and that works fine when you uh, when you actually train the model more and more. And now uh, let's come into the uh, almost last part of our theory, which is what is bot, which is also a uh, uh, trending term right now. Like when wherever you go and here, it would be robotic process automation or a chat bot or uh, or you will be hearing the automatic works that are being done by the uh, bot itself right so those are the software bot that what you have uh, what you have been using and uh, the bot is basically used to interact in a conversational way and using the but it can be of uh, either by speech or by text or by graphics or by images by whatever way that it can be but it should be in a conversational way <clears throat> And when you uh, when you take in terms of industry, there are multiple tools that can be used to develop the software bot. And uh, one such thing is it will be happening automatically without any human interaction. And uh, that would be mimicking what you would be doing. Like uh, in certain cases, you will be um, you will be doing the copying of Excel, which is for thousand lines and uh, you will be pasting it into an another excel and uh, sending it for verification purpose right so and that will happen for a daily uh, daily thing but when you develop a chat for when you develop a bot for it then that becomes easier and you can do it within seconds and bot can do it within seconds and uh, you just have to develop it once and post that it would be taken care of and these are some of the bot services that are available in azure one such is bot service frame bot framework which are used for developing the bots and bot framework tool is used to cover the end-to-end -end development workflow which is uh, which is you will be able to uh, right from the start of the development to the end of the development you will be you will be using the bot framework tools and bot framework service is a service that will be used to uh, capture your messages like uh, when it happens between the bot and the channels then uh, channels are something uh, like that can be of discord or that can be of teams um, those kind of applications are basically called as channels and uh, bot service framework is the one which will be acting as a uh, intermediate between the bots and the channels and you can also do deployment and configuration uh, as well in bot in Azure so that you will be able to deploy and have it have everything in one place in Azure itself. Now, let's see in deep of about how bot service works. Like uh, what I said, channels can, can be of any sort. It can be of Skype or uh, it can be of Discord or of any type. And uh, that will get interacted with the bot framework and uh, that gives out to the bot. And what happens is when a user comes in, channel will be the first one which will be sending a message from the bot service 
bot framework service to your bot saying that the user has joined and then the user will and then the bot will be sending a message saying that okay when um, like it will be acknowledging whether it uh, acknowledging that it has joined and then what what will happen is it will be uh, it when the user sends hi then the conversation begins right so the conversation will be beginning there and it would be sending a message again again the bot has joined and the user has begin the conversation and your bot has to respond respond back saying that uh, it it is okay to chat with it and uh, it will send an acknowledgement for it and then uh, what will happen is it will again uh, send a message when you send a, when you send some message then uh, the bot service framework again will send back to your bot saying that it has sent this bot it has sent this message and the bot has to look whether it has some kind of uh, relevant messages that has been coded for it and uh, it will check all its database and everything whether it has been coded for the right thing and uh, <clears throat> based on your message it would be checking for its reply and uh, with the with the database and everything it would be replying back for your message also um, when it goes to the channel from the bot service framework the bot service framework will send a message saying that it has sent the message to the channel and then the, the bot service bot will acknowledge the same this is called the whole chatbot works in background without our knowledge in in azure so uh, we are just we are just putting a message and we are getting a response either it can be a password change or either it can be a back end query whatever it may be we are just putting it and uh, getting a messages here but this is what happens all behind your scene all it needs is a bot service framework and your bot so that it will work together and uh, make your work proceed and uh, these are some kind of the services that are available for a bot to proceed with one such as qna maker and um, uh, you can also integrate the, any kind of rest service which is available in azure which is available like rest api or of any sort and make it integrate with the bot and then um, you have a, you have a different thing called as luis wherein um, it's a it's an advanced one and uh, that is used to have the natural language processing being included in it and uh, will be having the session being um, done for it now it's called as language understanding intelligent service and it's a kind of advanced one when when you want to try out things then you can make for q and a maker and for rest but when you want to in uh, when you want to build something of uh, with higher artificial intelligence being included in it then you might have to go for luis luis is a very good technology where uh, you will be use, is a very good service where you will be you you will be able to find answer for different thing and that works totally different like um, it will think how a human will think and it would put an um, reply for you back <clears throat> yeah um like what you uh, like what we all know uh, we do we can build chatbot is what we saw and that chatbot can be of different chi different types here one is informational chatbot and then transactional chatbot dynamic and contextual chatbot the informational chatbot is something like uh, where it would be providing information to you and uh, the like if you say hi to it then it would be sending an hi to it hi back to you and uh, it happens just with uh, one or two one or two phrases that what you have been coded in the knowledge article which is knowledge base for you and um, you will be like uh, <clears throat> for all the chatbots or bot service you have to create a knowledge base which acts as the important one and uh, that tax as a major thing and uh, when the knowledge base is not being updated then and there then uh, then your chatbot 
may not be performing as expected so the knowledge base plays an important role in updating and everything also you have an update and uh, you have an feature in azure like uh, you can see the message of how it will be uh, how it had reacted for the previous user for how uh, for what question he had asked for like um, what i am trying to say here is uh, if i send a message saying that hi and it is sending me back hi with the help of the knowledge base right so you can um, you can check in the analytics tab that whether uh, for how many users it had not sent back the message and that for which message it had not sent back the message and based on that you can train it and you can uh, you can develop the code for it and then like uh, these are the kind of informational chat informational chatbot will work in this way you will be having the information being delivered right and everything will have the azure bot service being part of it and uh, you will be able to have the mobile or any kind of uh, thing that has been available and uh, with the help of the qnd maker you will be able to get the informational chatbot and uh, get it sorted out and when it comes uh, when it comes to a iot device you will be connecting an iot device to it and uh, making it work so that uh, it it should understand the language between the uh, iot device and what the chatbot has been coded for so you will be adding an language understanding to it and uh, will be making that work the steps and everything remain same but you will be adding just the language understanding to it and the last one is the commercial chatbot which is uh, which is used for the commercial purposes and uh, um, and this is basically used for uh, all the co commercial things that what you need for and uh, like uh, when you take the transfer uh, transactional chatbot when you want a some some kind of uh, password or something then you would go for a, a transactional chatbot but where the co commercial chatbot is something where you will be having a higher data being coded for it and uh, been be able to make you answer for it and th that there comes the commercial chatbot and uh, yeah we are we are almost covered everything let me know if you have queries and we still have 10 minutes of time maybe i can walk you through the azure portal of uh, service what are the services that are available if we have time if and if we don't have any questions there is a question yeah. in the chat i'd like to yeah. bring up so sure. anil is asking can azure itself create models with the sample data to give us a model with the best prediction model yes exactly it can do uh, but uh, what you have to do is you have to use something called as auto ml which is automate um, automated machine learning and uh, what is the use of the automated machine learning is you will be uh, you will be just feeding in the data and uh, what happens beyond your scene is you will you will be uh, with uh, the more the automated machine learning will be predicting the data of what of will be sorting out and uh, will be cleansing the data and will be training will be preparing a data set training data set and uh, um, all those background works that the machine learning needs will be done by itself and uh, that that performs the action on your case and that will just predict you and uh, give you the best fit model that your data been fit for did i answer your question and we share this presentation the presentation will be uploaded to the reactor youtube channel and i am sharing the link, link to the youtube channel
Yes, Anil says yes. You have answered okay. his question. Okay. If there are no questions, then let me have a quick deep dive of how a chatbot will. I mean, how you can you make use of the uh, machine learning models or the chatbot services that are available in Azure. When uh, cognitive service is basically the main thing what you need for uh, what you need for Azure. So when you type in cognitive service itself, you will be getting a uh, you will be getting a first link which is cognitive services overview and with that you can um, with that you can create a free account when you have an account then you can create it or when uh, with the help of the subscription you will be able to do that and uh, i will show you how it works so we can even create a free account i can share the link yeah if you are a student or if you yeah, are, I'll share you both can the use it for sure. Student as well as for the professionals. Yeah, what you can do is yes, you can um, you can go here and try cognitive services free and with that you will be able to use it when you give start free and uh, you, it will be asking for a sign up and I do have a sign up already for me and I'm just giving in and uh, with that I will be able to do that I will be able to get the services that are available for me and uh, will be to use the services just a second. You should have a Azure subscription so all the works which whatever we discussed right now will be able to use here. And uh, this is one thing what we uh, right now saw. It is when you search for QA Maker in Azure portal, you will be able to get the um, cognitive services of QA Maker. And what you have to do is you have to build a knowledge base for it. Like what I said, uh, it has to be it has to be hold with the uh, database pack for it, right? To check for the answer for uh, whatever the question what you have given. So knowledge base is something of that sort where you will be creating the no the knowledge base can also be created by searching in here and uh, you will be able to get that or uh, when you go back to the q and a maker itself you will be able to create it with the help of the create option here and uh, you will be whatever the service that you are looking for you should um, you should actually have a resource group associated with that and if you are very new to it, I'm just telling. And based on that, you should be selecting the uh, selecting the pricing tier. And if you are a student or um, if or professional that you are trying to learn cognitive services, then the free option is being available for all these things. But uh, the thing is, you will be given only for a certain um, certain number of transactions only when you go for some purchases then you will be needing the standard things and want to try out those things since i have already created a free tire for me uh, it's not showing up but usually it does and you have to select the location that what you are residing for and uh, you have to create it once you have created everything what you can do is you can also deploy the same solution back to your back in Azure uh, with the help of the with the help of the cognitive services itself. Like uh, when you go back, then you you are clicking on it and you will be able to. You can also export it in form of CSV and everything. So all those things what you are going to do will all will all be in the same thing 
um it's not just chatbot or something uh it it can be of computer vision as well like inside the cognitive service itself you will be having computer vision custom vision face api and then you will be having speech service that is available for you and all the cognitive services will be listed here the one the cumulative one will be listed here so that uh, all those knowledge base and everything that what it needs for will be listed here and will be given to you and then uh, what what else it's um it, these are the most things that what we need for and when you want to create a alert for you like say in case you are exceeding the level of uh, exceeding the level of the maximum chats that what you are doing with the help of the chatbot then you can create the cost management budget also been added here and uh, been uh, given to you these are some kind of tricks that what you can uh, look for and uh, make use of it and yeah i am pretty much i think i have covered the uh, demo part as well i haven't gone through in deep of it but i'm just showing an overview of how it would be like uh, looking like and how we can make use of these things let me know if you have any queries if not we are almost in time to finish up the meeting <clears throat> any other questions I'll, I'll 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 give i'll give mics to the attendees okay yeah you can unmute and ask the questions now please go ahead so there is a on demand request from everyone bargavi that uh, mm -hmm. can we have a practical sessions about azure ai in future and sure. hands on workshop kind of sessions later sometime help sure we can i think final call to ask questions do we have any questions <clears throat> I think we are good to wrap up. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Bhargavi, for the session, and thank you all for joining us today. Please do share your feedback about today's session. Also, feel free to use the Learn module link, which I have shared in the chat section. This will give you the access to the additional resources and take your learning further. Also, please visit our Microsoft Reactor Meetup page. For more upcoming sessions, and thank you all once again for joining us today, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Pat, and thank you all for joining. If you have any further queries as well, uh, please ping me in uh, LinkedIn.